Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back, everybody. It's Jill with Go English Coach. So for today, we are looking at the American tea, British English and Australian English or other Englishes around the world do pronounce this particular sound differently. So first, we're going to look at a couple of different ways that we pronounce this sound. And then we're going to kind of do some practice here at the desk. So let's take a look. So we've got the American tea. We've got these three words here. And then we've got five different sounds. Yes, isn't that crazy? The American T is not just t, t, right? When T is in that initial position, the first sound in the word touch and took, you're going to have the full T sound with it aspirated. So with my piece of paper, you're going to have touch, took, okay? Now you're probably like, teacher, you forgot a word. What's going on? So the other one we have here is this word attain. Attain, all right? Let's just put that on hold for a second, okay? Let's jump to this next one. So the next sound, we've got these T's. Where, I want you to first to take a look at where in the word these T's show up. So we've got the word bottom. Butter, better, and atom. And the sound in all of those is a D sound. Okay, D. So bottom, bottom, butter. Again, this one in particular is very specific to American, North American English. So, for example, if you lived in London or are trying to study with that accent, you would not say bottom and butter. You would say butter, better, okay? Okay, so the rule is that when the letter T is in the initial position and stressed, we use the T sound, okay? The authentic, the real, like, T sound, okay? That's the rule. The rule for this one with the T in the middle is that when you've got the T in the middle and it's not stressed, when this syllable is not stressed, it changes to a D, okay? It's the D sound. So it's not D, it's, it's a softer D. It's a little shorter and it's um, less kind of, it's less of a pop with the sound. So bottom, butter, better, atom. The difference between, if we look at these rules, so if we look at this rule, when the T is in the middle, in an unstressed position, we have, we use a soft D, which is why we're gonna go back to our little point here, attain, right? Because that second syllable in the word attain is the stressed syllable, we use a clear T sound. We use this sound. This next symbol is the SH sound in English, and we have a lot of T I O N words in English. And usually I really can't think, I can't think of an example where we don't, but the pronunciation here is nation, nation, combination, exclamation, um, competition. There are lots of the T-I-O-N. So T-I-O-N is pronounced shin. The next one is ch. So this T with a kind of stretched out S here is the CH sound in English, ch, ch, okay? So we've got nature, perpetual, and sculpture. Those are, notice the spelling of those, okay? You've got the T-U-R-E, T-U here, and T-U here, nature, perpetual, sculpture. And the last one I think is kind of the most, now, I don't want to say difficult because then that'll get it in your head that it's difficult. So it's not difficult. It's just, we have to practice it and it's not obvious. Okay. So I want you to listen to these four words when I say them. And then I want you to think about what are you hearing? What is different about this T in the final position. So final meaning it's at the last, it's the last sound of the word, okay? 
versus the, this one where that's the first sound in the word. So touch, attain, took, t -t -t. you can feel that it's aspirated. Okay. Now listen here. Pop. Is it? Want. Don't. Don't. Pop. Isn't. Want. Don't. Are you hearing a T sound? We're not hearing a T sound. <laughs> okay. What's happening is we call this an unreleased T, right? So we don't fully say the T. We know it's there. What happens is it kind of just drops, right? So you say pot, pot. I'm not saying pot, pot. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying pot isn't, want, and don't. So you're getting to this, this sound, the N, right? Or here it's an ah, and you're just kind of going, and kind of cutting it right at the end. So the rule there is a final T sound most of the time is an unreleased T. So T in the first position, sharp, clear, aspirating, air is coming out. T, T, I can feel it in my hand. Here, when it's in the last position, it is not released. The mouth makes the sound or makes the, the shape of T, pot, but the air doesn't come out. So that's the only difference between this T and this T is air doesn't come out. All right, and then these two are just kind of nuances of the English sound system. So don't worry too much about those, just kind of get used to them. And you know, the next time you look at it, you're like, oh, it's combination. You probably know that already, to be honest. But I think these three, you know, T, the D sound, and then this final sound, this will actually become a really important when we start looking at linking words. So when we start connecting, for example, like want it. Once you start doing this, you want it, you want it. So this actually totally goes away. Do you want it? And then it sounds like one it. Okay. If you compare how we say it, how a native speaker would say it, want it, do you want it? Do you want it? Do you want it? So the N sound is actually moving over here. This is what we call linking. Um, do you want it? And this completely goes away. Now, if you were to say, do you want it? This is no problem, okay? It is not, it is not a problem. It is not going to make the person listening to you confused. Um, it's completely fine. It's just not how um, a native speaker generally speaks, okay? Unless they are trying to be very clear or they're angry or do you want it? <laughs> Maybe then, you know, it would be, you know, to put some emphasis on something. But in general, we don't release the final T. And then when you're combining it with another word, especially a word that has a vowel at the beginning, a vowel sound to begin, you're gonna move this final sound over here and it's gonna become want it. Do you want it? Do you want it? Okay. All right, so that's our kind of overview on American tea.